I'm going to show you how easy it is to set up the Onyx system or any interface with your Macintosh for use with all your general Macintosh applications. So you go to your audio MIDI setup. If you were not able to find it here on your toolbar, it would be in your users folder or you could just search for audio MIDI setup in your finder. And you want to make sure, once you plug in the uh, Onyx satellite via Firewire, that you're going to be able to set this as your default input, default output, and your system output. That means that any sound that's created by your operating system or by iTunes or any software that you have that is a general Macintosh program will send its signal through the Onyx satellite. Uh, and you can see the properties for the Onyx satellite show you that it's recording at 44.1, 24-bit, that's sweet. There's two inputs, and then you have your six outputs here, so great. Now I'm going to show you the specific software that comes with this called the Traction. All right, Traction software is admittedly limited, and I don't suppose that anyone would argue that this is one of the worst solutions you could use if you want to do professional recording, okay? <laughs> Cubase, Sonar, Logic, Pro Tools, any of those software programs are going to destroy this. But it comes with the software, and so we may as well explain how it works, okay? Or it comes with the hardware, rather. Uh, when you open it uh, for the first time, you're going to be looking at a, a default session called Fang Bonus that they give you. Uh, which is in your library if you're ever looking to find it. And it starts off with a list, which is different than most software programs. And it gives you a list of the waveforms, that's what these little symbols refer to, and the edit decision list. So you have all your files, and then the EDL that is a list of instructions about how to play the files. And so when you click on the EDL, you are able to see what you're used to seeing in a digital audio workstation, your individual tracks over a timeline, and you can see when each of the tracks are going to come in and out. And uh, let me just briefly explain what this screen is about. You have your regular edit window. To the right, you have what we would normally refer to as inserts. This software refers to them as filters, okay? So whether it's a compressor or a filter or a reverb, this software calls them a filter, no matter what they are. And you could click on a track here, and uh, you could sort of add a new filter. And you bring the filter down, and it'll give you a list of filters, and you could put a reverb or a delay or what have you um, on any sound, basically, at any time. And um, there are some fairly decent compressors in the software here, uh, equalizers and things like that. Down at the left, this is basically your menu that you'd normally see up here at the top. So there is no file menu, edit menu, that sort of stuff. It's all negotiated down here. So this is where you would save or export or apply automation, change any settings or what have you. Uh, this section here basically shows you what you have selected. So if I have selected my volume and pan pot for my rhythm guitar track, well, that volume and pan information will be shown down here. If I should so happen to select, say, the delay um, on my strings, that information about that delay would be available down here. And then over on the right, you have your global parameters. So you have your master tempo setting, your transport, and um, you know your loop uh, and punch settings. So pretty basic and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start a new session because this is kind of complicated to look at and we're going to import a drum loop, record a guitar part and show you how to export um, a, a waveform or a mix.